It's time for Wretched Radio with Todd Friel. Missing church is one thing. Is missing Easter another? This is Wretched Radio. The question du jour, or at least the question of do tomorrow. What about Easter? Uh, Most churches, I think, have settled into place regarding missing Sunday services because of coronavirus. But knock, knock, knocking on the church calendar door. It's Easter. Will that be a different story? That is the question. How are you going to answer that? Mm? That's the question, Todd. Is that really the question? I don't think so. The question is one about fundamental liberties and what it is to be an American. Are we a free country? The question is, is there still a First Amendment? And do we stand for the First Amendment just as our forefathers and not trade our freedom for a false sense of security? Here's what the Constitution says. Amendment 1. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof, or abridging the freedom of speech, or of the press, or the right of the people peaceably to assemble and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. See, that freedom to assemble is part and parcel to the freedom of religion. If we cannot assemble together In congregations, we have no freedom of religion. Oh, we can all worship God individually, but we're talking about the freedom to exercise our religion as the Bible has commanded us to do so. That's the question. You think Easter is somehow going to cause people to grow a spine in this country and stand up like those people that we looked to in the past that founded this country, that escaped the religious persecution and came to this country and sought to freely worship God as they saw fit? What about the pilgrims who suffered and died? In the first winter, half of them died. You think they were worried about their safety? Or did they see something in life more precious than clinging on to mere existence that they were willing to risk it all in order to freely worship God as they saw fit. And now we're falling in line. All the churches have settled into place, as you say. This church defying state orders saying, nope, it's because we think that this is perhaps politically motivated. We're going to keep doing our church services. Most churches, I think, have settled into There can be circumstances when it is not a sin to not assemble, even if you believe that a weekly assembling is a commandment. Still missing the point. The question fundamentally is not whether it is a sin or no sin not to assemble weekly. It is that we have been told to assemble by our God, and now the state is saying we cannot or we face being arrested. So who are you going to obey? God? Or man. Hmm? How are you going to answer that? Hmm? You don't think that this is what this is about? You don't think so? Sunday, shots of a packed church went viral. You may be seated. Amen. By Monday, Pastor Rodney Howard Brown of the River at Tampa Bay Church had a warrant out for his arrest. His reckless disregard for human life put hundreds of people in his congregation at risk and thousands of residents who may interact with them this week in danger. I know, Todd, you say you don't get political on your show, but I'm going to. I'm going to get real political because sometimes there's a need to get real political. And that's this. See, while God's people were looking for a big bad wolf, a Hillary Clinton or Barack Obama figure to come along and forcibly curtail their freedoms, the state, that's the global state, soft-pedaled them a political messiah who has subtly caused them to lay down their rights freely for the seemingly benign rationale that it is for the good and safety of all. How else did you think it was going to go down? Did you really miss the devil's modus operandi in Genesis 3? He came to Eve how? Subtly. He did not use force. He did not outright contradict God's command. He did not say, You must eat the fruit. 
He conned her into thinking eating the fruit was for her own good and that it was actually God's intent all along. And the rest is history. Just like this moment in time will be perhaps the most pivotal moment in our lives for the current generation of believers, and we are willingly being hoodwinked and selling future generations down the river into slavery in the process. Think I'm overreacting? Maybe you're underreacting. Thank you for being here today and for your willingness to meet outside in the heat while the Sheriff's Office continues to do our part to stop the spread of COVID-19. Joining me today is our state attorney, Mr. Andrew Warren, who worked expeditiously with us on this case. Thank you, Mr. State Attorney. And a religious leader from our community who's committed to public safety and the welfare of his congregation, Bishop, Tom, Bishop Thomas Scott. Bishop Scott, thanks for being here today with us. We're living in unprecedented times right now. So many people have lost their jobs, are under stress, and looking for some sense of calm and normalcy. I believe there's nothing more important than faith during a time like this. And as a sheriff's office, we would never impede someone's ability to lean on their religious beliefs as a means of comfort. But practicing those beliefs has to be done safely. And we of the state will be there to help you to understand what safety is and how it is to be defined going forward. We are from the state and we are here to help you. No need to trust God. Trust us. We are in control. Last night I made a decision to seek an arrest warrant for the pastor of a local church who intentionally and repeatedly chose to disregard the orders set in place by our president, our governor, the CDC, and the Hillsborough County Emergency Policy Group. His reckless disregard for human life put hundreds of people in his congregation at risk and thousands of residents who may interact with them this week in danger. Hillsborough Sheriff Chad Cronister said Brown encouraged members to show up in person amid the coronavirus pandemic, even providing bus transportation. Brown turned himself in on charges of unlawful assembly. What exactly is unlawful assembly? When the law of the land clearly states there shall be no law made against peaceable assembly. By all logic and legal definitions, a law prohibiting assembly in general and the assembly of those practicing their religion is unconstitutional and therefore unlawful. The sheriff is then the real transgressor of the law, but it is okay since it is for the good of society, as if that is of any importance to the liars, thieves, and lawless exploiters of the worldly powerless that sit in power in this day and age. Brown turned himself in on charges of unlawful assembly and violating public health emergency rules of isolation and quarantine. This church has a concern not only for the physical well-being of its participants in the community, but also the spiritual well-being. Liberty Council, now representing the pastor, maintains the church had hand sanitizer available. Six-foot separations on the floor for family groups and staff wearing gloves. They bought $100,000 worth of hospital-grade equipment that they have established throughout the church that uh, killed of microbes, including those in the family of the coronavirus. Attorney Matthew Staver calls the arrest discriminatory and unconstitutional. You cannot um, look at the situation and say that it's being evenly enforced across the board. See, but it's not really about public safety. It's about control, keeping people locked down, and first and foremost, to get the people of God to stand down. Oh, you can still go to the grocery store and be at close quarters with people you don't know. Just don't come worship God with people you do know and would have your best interest in mind. If God's people stand down now, they will stand down the rest of the way and heaven help us if we do. All it would take is for the people of God to gather in mass upon their capital buildings and surround those buildings and sing and praise God and call upon the name of the Lord until the very bricks crumble. Problem is, from what I'm seeing, most Christians have forsaken their First Amendment right of assembly and Hebrews 10.25 already. If the state came and chained all the church doors in my county shut, it would be but a formality because Christians either don't attend or they rush to close up the second our governor sent the order down. 
are we sinning if we don't get together on Easter? And the answer to that question, I think, should be left to different churches to make those decisions. I really do. I know what I would do, but I don't think that I would be right-minded to make a law where there is no law. But the government is, right, in making a law where there ought be no law, Todd? In asking the rather asinine question concerning whether gathering on Easter is special enough for Christians to stand up like men of God and freeborn Americans and exercise their God-given and constitutionally protected rights, Todd Friel presupposes that the state has rightful authority in this matter and effectually deflects away from the real question of whether the state ought to violate our God-given and constitutionally protected right to freely worship God as we see fit, including the right to assembly and its attendant risks, which are always present even were there no coronavirus, as we have seen recently in the instances of those congregations massacred by demoniacs in Charleston, South Carolina, in Sutherland Springs, Texas. This also happens to be a church uh, that appears to be mm, a a little bit more interested in some signs and wonders than I would be. Ah, and then the old smear tactic to ensure the loyal sycophants rush to agree. The freedom of worship is there precisely so that we don't all have to measure up to you or the Pope or any other would-be arbiter's decree of what is rightful worship there, Todd. There are some. Now, this is a divide I get. I I understand this, that we do not see a specific command for the assembling of the saints. What is the regularity of that? I think the pattern was laid down for us in creation week that we have a day, a time set aside for God. And the pattern that was established in the New Testament was the, quote, Lord's Day. That's what it was called, the Lord's Day. And it was Sunday. So I think that we have a specific pattern with enough of a commandment. You put the two together as you go about having scripture interpret scripture, the analogy of scripture. We should indeed be getting together weekly. And it would be considered, in my estimation, a sin to not. So why am I not bothered that churches are not assembling? Because laws are made for man, not man for laws. And if... There are circumstances that prohibit it for an exceptional reason, then I, I, I think that people are not sinning by not doing church on Sunday. Some people would say, I'm being a bit double-minded. Hey, you say that it's a sin to not meet, but then you're saying it's not a sin to not meet? Yes. Again, the question is not whether it is a sin to not meet at a church building on a weekly basis or on what day. Obviously, there are and always have been disagreements within the body of Christ on this issue, and it needs to be left up to the conscience of the individual believer. The real issue is that the state is now dictating to God's people of a once free land whose forefathers bled and died in preservation of the God-given freedom to freely gather and freely worship the God of our fathers and forefathers as they see fit. The state is already taking this question out of your hands, Todd. How can you not see that, but instead argue a moot point? They're encouraging religious leaders to continue serving just online, in small groups, or drive through type events. Let's figure out the best way we can go and work together to preserve religious liberty on the one side, but also maintain the public health on the other side of things. Those two can work together. Work together like how the church of the arrested pastor was clearly having them work together? Or in the way the state decrees they work together? This church has a concern not only for the physical well-being of its participants in the community, but also the spiritual well-being. Liberty Council, now representing the pastor, maintains the church had hand sanitizer available. Six-foot separations on the floor for family groups and staff wearing gloves. They bought $100,000 worth of hospital-grade equipment that they have established throughout the church that uh, kills uh, microbes, including those in the family of the coronavirus. Let's figure out the best way we can go and work together to preserve religious liberty on the one side, but also maintain the public health on the other side of things. Those two can work together. You see what is presupposed is that we accept this idea that physical health and well-being comes first before spiritual well-being. Hmm, I wonder how and in what ways that could be fundamentally at odds with Christianity. If the order said that only religious groups couldn't congregate, that would be a problem. But as long as it's a neutral 
limitation that it goes to political gatherings, it goes to religious gatherings, social gatherings, concerts, as you mentioned. Uh, it will generally be upheld because of the state's interest in emergency health situations like this. Generally be upheld does not automatically mean right. It simply means they want you to accept, condone, and even beg for their shredding of your constitutional rights. Now watch how they tie this to an old case of a pastor fighting a state-mandated vaccine. Get ready to hear this case repeatedly invoked by both sides of the controlled media in the not-too-distant future. Some of you will understand how the two fit neatly together in the Antichrist plan. And Marshall referenced the case, in fact, this one, Jacobson versus Massachusetts, way back in 1905, an example of the government overriding individual liberties during a health crisis. A pastor objected to the state requiring people to get smallpox vaccines. Well, the Supreme Court, they sided with Massachusetts, ruling that the general public has a right to protect itself against epidemics. Presupposing the touted cure is not worse than the known disease and that vaccines do what they are claimed to do, and only what they are claimed to do, and that they do it so well that the unvaccinated are a threat to the vaccinated, who are vaccinated with vaccines that work? Yeah, that must be why you need a law to enforce it. I got it. Todd Friel and the rest of the evangelical mouthpieces might not see what time it is. I pray they do. But our local radio host does, even though he loves him some Trump. Listen to what he said this morning and compare it to the wishy-washy, gutless sentiments of the religious hierarchy. Not the religious hierarchy I am blessed to be under, because as you saw in my recent uploads, my pastor stood up even though his congregation didn't and refused to live in fear just as God has told us. He did not give us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. We are not people who stick by Donald Trump because we blindly follow, as the left says. We stick by Donald Trump because he does what we actually believe. Not, and that's why they can't separate us from him. But if you can get Donald Trump to do liberal things, if you can get Donald Trump to allow liberals to do power grabs in this country and he doesn't do anything about it, well, now Donald Trump isn't doing what we are wanting. And the people in the White House better understand. They better understand this. Here, here's a better way I can put it. If Barack Obama was president right now and this was happening with Barack Obama as president, what do you think Republicans would be doing? Answer that question honestly. They would be flipped out and saying it's the end of America. They are doing a power grab. This America is going to be over with. Thomas Massey, who's a Republican who wanted everybody to vote, come to Washington, D.C., and he said, hey, if everybody at, at Ralph's and UPS and FedEx and the mail uh, and the post office, I have all those people have to work. They all have to go into work. Why shouldn't we have to go into work and vote, meaning Congress? And uh, so people went nuts. And uh, so anyway, he's telling the truth about this bill. He tweeted this out. The stimulus package that just passed is the biggest wealth transfer from common folks to the super rich Wall Street and bankers in the history of mankind. Done in the name of a virus. With twelve hundred dollar checks as the cheese in the trap. This will be obvious in short order. Christians, never forget that Fox News is not on your side. Oh, they pretend to be when convenient, but as soon as the globalist machine goes in gear, their real colors show. Fox News has been trying to smear this guy because he's telling the truth and actually standing up for the American people. See, they have at least 10 different plots and subplots going on with this coronavirus. The mind spins trying to keep up with them all, but suffice it to say that they're all working towards the same end. Namely, the shredding of the American Constitution, which represents the last speed bump on the road of the global state. But they need you to do it. You have to sign off on it and ask them to do it. That is part of their so-called gentleman's agreement and what some refer to as the revelation of the method. See, the devil doesn't just want your captivity. He wants you to ask, no beg, for his authority over you. 
He wants to stand in the place of God, showing himself that he is God, as the Bible says. So it's all working towards the consolidation of power into a centralized state. And how they achieve this is by engineering a threat, which ingeniously and metaphorically, as well as literally, is a virus, and then set themselves up as the saviors of mankind. But this salvation comes at the price of all your freedoms and ability to live as God would have you live in concert with and dominion over the nature he has created. If Barack Obama was president and was doing what Donald Trump is allowing, even though Donald Trump hasn't made any orders to violate the Constitution, governors have. Our constitutional rights being taken away, if Obama was doing this, conservatives would be going nuts. Now, President Trump, you need to know your base would be going crazy to the point where we'd be close to a civil war over what's going on right now if Barack Obama was president and did. The only reason why this is happening and getting away with it is because Donald Trump is president. That is the only reason why conservatives are tolerating this. Because Donald Trump has built up so much credibility about who he is ahead of this that people are trusting Donald Trump. But what if it was a president you didn't trust? And that's an easy way for a conservative to know whether something should be happening or shouldn't. Replace the president with a Democrat and say, what if the Democrat did this? What would my reaction be? So if President Trump doesn't correct this, I don't know what the time frame would be. But don't listen to the media. People are getting angry out there. And and that bailout, that bailout, I'm starting to realize, isn't going to buy as much time as I thought it would. I thought, yeah, you know what, that could buy him a whole month. But now I'm looking at it and saying, actually, no, because people realize their freedoms are much more important than getting a check. And for people who are in the working class, people who wake up every day and go to a job, I mean, look at what's happening in the retail sector. Macy's, the department store, laid off all of its workers. Kohl's is laying off all of its workers. And I get that. Their stores are forced to close now. But if you wake up every day and know the satisfaction of doing a job and getting paid for it, how are you going to feel when your job is gone, but the Corona cash check comes in? Right. You'd say, I'd want my job in a... I'd give back this money if I'd have my job back. Look, if you run a company, I mean, just imagine how nerve-wracking it is. You've seen sales go down by 50%, 75%, and yet you still want to pay your employees. And you say, uh, gee, money's going out, but money's not coming in. And I think a lot of business leaders would weather the storm if they knew when it was going to end, if they could see the light at the end of the tunnel, that's what President Trump has to give guidance on. If the president says over the next three weeks, I imagine things are going to begin opening up, a lot of business leaders will say, well, well, OK, I, I can tough it out for three weeks. Mm -hmm. If you're told it's indefinite and we don't know when and maybe June and maybe things won't be normal through the entire summer, that's a huge unknown for people who have to make a payroll every day. Yeah, this is a horrible situation. Like I've said, if you put Barack Obama in office and said Barack Obama does a fast track two trillion dollar, two trillion dollar bill that they just fast track and don't even know fully what's in everything. There's no way they could know what everything that's in there. Two trillion dollars. And he's got governors running around saying churches cannot assemble. And businesses, you can't we're going to shut your businesses down. I mean, imagine if Barack Obama was doing that. What would your reaction be? Yeah, uh, he, he's running against uh, neoliberal economics, and it's not even uh, a socialist program or anything of the kind. It's just a sort of moderate uh, capitalism, that, a more humane capitalism <laughs> that, that he's advocating and, of course, protection of the nation's national resources, particularly oil, most of which has already been delivered indirectly to the U.S. and other foreign companies. 
So he's sort of a nationalist, moderate centrist, left of center. But the elites, as you say, will not allow him in. And so that's why in the previous presidential election that he ran in six years ago, Lopez Obrador won by everyone's testimony and it's been documented, including in my new book, Mexico's Revolution Then and Now. And uh, yet he was not allowed to take office. Calderon came in from the conservative PAN party and unleashed the military on the people to repress any social movements of protest. Now, back in 2006, of course, in the name of fighting narco gangs, but it's really to repress the social movements. And before neocons think I am sounding like a brainwashed liberal and telling them documented fact, let me say that perhaps the piece of legislation most responsible for the influx of illegal immigration we see today, NAFTA, was signed into law by Democrat Bill Clinton. Another demonstration that at the top, the global cabal is in control of both of our nation's political parties. And therefore, there is no hope of ever achieving real change within their paradigm. And while Trump campaigned on the idea that he would see to NAFTA being repealed, I'll believe it when I see it. And even then, it will be with great trepidation and apprehension, wondering if the globalists will use it and Brexit and other such things to justify a staged economic collapse, whereby their goal of a one-world order will be realized, rising like a phoenix from its ashes. Somewhere along the line, they've convinced people on both sides of the political paradigm that economics is first and foremost, security is second, and morality is some distant afterthought if mentioned at all. But if your moral compass isn't set right, how are you going to correctly dictate anything else? That was perhaps the biggest hoax of this election. How we were being conditioned to think by the mainstream media and even the Republican establishment's apparent opposition to him, that Trump was somehow an outsider, not part of the club. This was the narrative push through one so-called alternative media source after another. I've heard from a source I trust, and there are not many I do trust, that upwards of 90% of the alternative media is disinfo. And I'll say it now publicly, as I've been saying privately the past year, Pay attention to those media outlets claiming to be on the side of God and country that actively promoted Donald Trump. While there could be instances of unwitting ignorance, especially in the smaller outlets that basically follow the lead of the bigger outlets, this unabashed promotion of a false candidate as some sort of savior of the republic ought to be a huge red flag, cluing us into who these people are really working for. Consider the big piece of supposed evidence that was used to really seed this idea that Trump was an outsider. Uh, and now they're faced with a very real prospect of Donald Trump 
becoming the leader of the party, and it absolutely drives them crazy. Uh, they just cannot Why? imagine sharing. Well, because he's an outsider. He's not them. He's not part of the club. He's uncontrollable. Uh, you know, he hasn't been through the initiation rites. He didn't belong to the secret society. Um, and I think that they, they don't see him. They have no idea how to relate to him. Uh, I know you consider yourself a Catholic, but what happens when you worship Moloch at the Bohemian Grove? <laughs> New York Post says uh, that male prostitutes are shipped in into the Bohemian Grove. Can you tell us what happens there? You actually believe all this junk? The initiation rights. He didn't belong to the secret society. You actually believe all this junk? Bill Clinton said that Republicans run around naked in the woods there. Did you say the Bohemian Club? Yeah. That's where all those rich Republicans go up and stand naked against redwood trees, right? <laughs> I've never been to the Bohemian Club, but you ought to go. It'd be good for you. Get some fresh air. And you don't want to know what Richard Nixon said about the place. The Bohemian Grove that I attend, one time at a time, the Easterners and the others have come there. But it is the most and evil American ever imagined in San Francisco crowd because it's just terrible. I mean, I have watched shake hands with anybody in San Francisco. That's the place you attended. It's a secret society. Can you tell us at least who invited you? You know, it's nice to know that there's some people who have fantasy lives. Can I get a quick autograph here? What's this picture of? I actually don't remember. It's you at the Bohemian Grove. Okay. You told me that oh, yeah. uh, I'm delusional. You know, it's nice to know that there's some people who have fantasy lives. It's you at the Bohemian Grove. Okay. You told me that... Oh, yeah. uh, 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 and all the winds make merry with thy dust. Bring fire! Now, the question must be asked, why would Newt Gingrich, a recent convert to the Roman Catholic Church, like other globalists such as Tony Blair and Jeb Bush, who is also a 33rd degree Freemason, CFR member, and attendee at the Bohemian Grove, a man immersed to his eyeballs in secret societies, be telling us Trump is not also involved in the same? Are we really supposed to believe he is telling us the truth? He walked up to the temple with gold in his hand And he bought off the priests and propositioned the land And the world was his harlot and laid in the sand While the band played 666 We served at his table and slept on the floor But he starved us and beat us and nailed us to the door Well, I'm ready to die, I can't take any more And I'm sick of his lies and his tricks He told us he loved us but that was a lie There was blood in his pockets And death in his eyes Well, my number is up And I'm willing to die If the band will play sick, sick If the band will play sick, sick, sick if the band will play 666 And what was really missed and what Gingrich divulged was the admission that secret societies are at work determining candidates and who is elected. He said it, unchallenged, right on mainstream media. You know, there's an old saying, the same my old man told me since I was a young kid. 
that I've seen stand the test of time. Show me your friends, and I'll show you who you are. But Donald Trump, who's paled around with the Clintons for years, and other third and fourth tier operatives like the Wall Street bankers who have bankrupted this country, is somehow not connected. How naive must they think we are? And unfortunately, I don't see much evidence to prove their assessment of us is unwarranted. You don't get to be president of this country without having been initiated in the club. That's just the reality of the matter. They don't deny the truth. They make a joke out of it. Remember that Simpsons episode? Freemasons rule the country. It's chanted in a way to make it seem like a ridiculous idea. Freemasons run the country! But Freemasoning most certainly is the tie that binds those leading us into the globalist, antichrist, one world beast system. You see, I remember back in 2008 how Obama was promoted as this outsider, this new thing. There was so much dissatisfaction in the country. Disillusionment. Even many conservatives voted for Obama because they were just so fed up with the Bush regime. And now, the shoes on the other foot, and all these people that made fun of, you know, the the woman with the bomb phone and all this are, are, are basically, uh, you know, celebrating in the same fashion, like somehow Trump is going to restore the country and give me back my republic. We do not hesitate to destroy in order to create a new world. God help it. I'm sorry for you. And I for you, Thorndike. You and your world. Do you know what would happen then? Don't forget their Reichstag fire trial. You know their genius for producing witnesses and documents to prove their enemies guilty of what they intend to do. Today, Europe. Tomorrow, the world. One of the first things you learn in this business is forget about capitalism versus communism. That is absolute nonsense. The two are behind the scenes are hand in hand. You need the so-called conflict between the two to keep people focusing. Look, keep you looking over there, you know, capitalism versus communism. You know, that makes a nice little picture. You know, you get books on it and films on it. Uh, capitalism versus communism. That's not where the action is. The action is over here. succeeding because the American people don't understand their enemy. They don't even know what's happening. People were extolling the virtues, the virtues of Pat Buchanan and actually considering voting for that man for president and he sent them all a postcard. And on the front of that postcard he identified himself as a high priest of the mysteries. Because on the front of his Christmas cards that he sent to all of his followers was the Thales, the obelisk of Osiris, with a nice red bow tied around the base which represented the testes. You know what he was saying to you? Are there any children in here? He was saying, he was laughing at you. And so was every other member of the Illuminati. He's a highly degreed member of the sovereign and military order of the Knights of Malta, which was taken over in the Peasants' Revolt in England by the Knights Templars who had sworn revenge upon the old Hospitallers of St. John's, which later became the Knights of Malta because of their role in the suppression of the Templars. How many of you watch Trinity Network? How many of you watch Pat Robertson? You ever seen the cross in the crown? Do you know what that means? It's the symbol of the Templars. The Knights Templar. It is the symbol of the unification of the church and the government over the people. Is that what you want? Every time any church gets control of government, the people suffer. 
It has always happened. That's why our founding fathers established a country where that was not supposed to happen, where everybody was free to worship at the altar of their choice. And if you think they were all of one mind, you better think again. How many religions of the Protestant group do you think existed in this country when our founding fathers put together the Constitution? Over 1,500 different groups all claiming they were right, teaching a different dogma, quoting scripture to justify what they said, and everybody else was going to hell. So don't give me this Christian nation bullshit, because that's what it is. This nation reflected Christian values because the people who made up the government in the early days were Christian. But none of them agreed with each other and they still don't today. They very seldom ever have. What do you mean by Christian? Seventh-day Adventist? Branch Davidian? We need to do some serious evaluating some very serious checking out of agendas you really want to take over the government and make it a theocracy because I'm going to tell you exactly what's going to happen if you do that you're going to burn people at the stake who disagree with you and if that happens I'm going to have to take up arms all over again and so will many of you because you're going to be persecuted you see because whichever one controls the government, you're going to have to conform to that teaching. And if you don't believe in it, you're a heretic. Do you understand what I'm talking about? What is our common bond truly? Freedom. Freedom. Without freedom, you can't be a Christian no matter what denomination you belong to. You can't be a Buddhist. You can't own a donut shop. You can't drive from here to Oregon. You can't be an American because that's what it's all about. And that's the only thing that it's all about. Nothing else. Nothing else. It's about freedom. There's going to be Christians that just flat out see this differently, and they're not heretics. They're not trying to be defiers of clear commandments. Now, if they've got some wonky motivations for it, that's another thing. Because standing up to the one world government in defense of our God-given rights and the Constitution which protects them, which allows you to be on the air, Todd, is wonky motivation, I guess. You have to think about these things so that you can think with a clear perspective. Let's let's take Donald Trump out and let's stick to our principles. What are our principles and is this in line with our principles and what we vote for? I am looking at things from my beliefs and my principles, not from R or D. I don't look at it as R and D usually. I try not to. Uh, sometimes I do, but you know what I'm saying. There are still others that um, I guess don't see the massive danger of all of this down the road. This precedent, what this is setting up, what this sets up for in the future. This test to see if Americans will just allow it and accept it. You had a pastor arrested the other day for his congregation coming together, but it's waking people up. It's waking people up. To see, oh my gosh, a pastor was arrested for holding a church service. That's the state in which we live right now. When I said we're living in a socialist country right now, when a pastor gets arrested for holding church service, how could you say I'm wrong? I hope it wakes up Donald Trump. President Trump, pastors are being arrested in America for holding church services, President Trump. Are you listening, President Trump? 
I know you've got a bunch of people in your ear, and some of them are morons and are not telling you what I'm telling you. You need to hear what we're saying. Pastors are being arrested for holding church services in America, President Trump. Register that, please, in your mind. And I know if you do, everything will be okay. I know it's politically incorrect to say that what that pastor did by going against the uh, by going against what the government is saying and holding a church service. You, people say, "Ah, you got to submit to the laws." He was. He was submitting to the Constitution and the freedom to practice his religion. It was the authorities that are violating the law, not not the pastor. The pastor did not violate the law. The authorities did. And by him being arrested and being fined, that is a violation of the Constitution, and he has to sue. He's better sue. Here's the way we need to put it, because President Trump, you can do this 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 week. You could do this today, President Trump. I'm going to send a direct message to you, and I'm going to send this audio to some members of your campaign, and I hope they listen to it. What the pastor said was correct in this from this standpoint. Why isn't God essential? You're going through a coronavirus and we're being tested here. Okay, let's say it truly is the worst pandemic ever. Wouldn't that mean that God is more essential than ever? You see, this is a test from God, President Trump, to see if the American people turn to God or they turn to government. And you have told the American people, well, you haven't, governors have, but you haven't, you haven't stuck up for us in this area, President Trump. Declare God essential. Churches are essential. That's all you have to do this week. You could do that today. You tell the governors, hey, God is essential in America. Churches are essential in America. They are not non-essential. They are essential. Some churches are holding church services and getting around it by doing drive-through church services. I saw this on Laura Ingram's show last night, and it's a cool idea, where everyone gathers outside in a parking lot and they sit in their cars. And then they have speakers and stuff and they they hold the church service. It's a way to get around it, but I'm not happy with that. No, We, sh- look, we shouldn't have to do that. Look, God is essential. Fair. At that mega church in Hillsborough County, Florida, where they're trying to arrest the pastor? Yes. Everyone who showed up for church that Sunday knows the risk of being around other people. It's not like the congregation were, were ignorant morons. Right. They're there who have prioritized going to worship over the risks that were in front of them. And that is your individual li- liberty and, and, and freedom. Under the Constitution. Yes, that's absolutely correct. That is your constitutional right. And they cannot violate your constitutional right. And that pastor showed that they are, they will, and they will arrest you. And I don't care what anyone says about this pastor. To me, he is a hero because he has opened up the conversation that I've been waiting for. God is essential. Donald Trump, declare God essential in America. You you watch how quickly this all turns around for you if you do that, President Trump. You declare God essential in America and you watch what happens, baby. Do it!